Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's Isaac in my home here in my studio. I do everything creative mostly, yeah. So, um, I'm just gonna give a tour of my little creative space, how I make music, and a bit of uh, explaining a bit, perhaps, perhaps will help someone as well to, you know, find a bit of a creative space as well you know tools to make music to create something interesting you know why not that's all about you know being creative staying creative and follow your dreams your passion your goals your ambitions you know because i can tell you that because um you see over there there's a lot of there's a lot of records there's another room there as well more records but it took me so many years so long to understand one simple thing that it's perfectly fine to you know to play other people music yeah you pick the record you put the record on the platter yeah you have some turntables there i'll show you in a bit and you play other people music and it's fascinating isn't it yeah but how about playing your own music as well yeah maybe not all your set your your DJ set, but perhaps a couple, yeah, three, four of them. One, how about that? One record, yeah. Um, because it's about contributing value into the industry, yeah. You as a musician, a DJ, let's say you're a DJ, yeah. I mean, when you say DJ, it's about playing, playing records, yeah, playing other people's records. We kind of a change these these days now. 2020, 2023, and in the future, the way it works, the game it is, you have to be a producer as well. You know, it's, it's more work. You know, you have to play your music, other people's music, produce the music. Uh, it's like it's like a, it's talent is not anymore enough. You know, it's like you have to do everything. You know, and when you're kind of in a beginning, and perhaps you don't have the finance, the financial to have a producer a co-producer because established artists you know they are touring the world you know they have they are very busy people you know, it's a business it's, it's it is a business obviously yeah but they have producers co-producers engineers sound engineers you know all that thing costs it's, it's about financial and all that but what about when you are one yeah one single person yeah, and you kind of uh, want to create something interesting yeah and, you have to do it by yourself yeah and you have to produce music as well you know you have to contribute that this is how, how kind of a your um i mean to put it a bit quite straight making a career just by playing other people's music yeah a dj yeah playing other people's music making a career from that yeah it's almost impossible these days there's a lot of musicians djs yeah djs yeah dj djs yeah who managed to make this career as a dj and they are only djs yeah by playing other people's music um they start long ago long ago like a decade ago five ten years twenty years ago yeah but these days is about you you kind of a you 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 raise you make your name should i say important yeah maybe that's the right word yeah by being a producer by you know people producers as well finding your music as well and it's just kind of a oh that that person you know he made his track and all that you know this is kind of a the way it works yeah so i will show you a bit my creative space and how i went from making music inside the computer which is nothing wrong with that i guess it's all right to the thing is inside the computer you, you get stuff done quite fast but you start to use the the stock the stock plugins the stock sounds and let's be very straight a lot of music sounds very similar these days and you you practice you make music you you become experienced knowledge and all that and you'll go to a point when you get a bit more smart more intelligent yeah you start to research different sounds different instruments you become interested in those instruments one will sound in a way one will sound in another way you see over there let me stop a bit yeah there's a chair there's a little table 
I'm a very honest person. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm not like to invent something. To, but you see, on that chair, sometimes I spend from four o'clock in the morning till maybe eleven o'clock in the daytime, one o'clock, two o'clock, freaking hours, six, eight, ten hours. I stay there on that chair with my iPhone, with this iPhone that you that I'm filming now, and with a pair of AirPods. Or some headphones and I, I, I constantly investigate the old freaking internet on synthesizers on sound design on, on unique instruments and then I make A and B comparison how a drum machine from 1980 will sound and how a drum machine from 2020 will sound because you have these copycats kind of a instrument digital instruments that they are releasing a, a, a copy of a let's say a TR-808 or a 909 which is made 40 years ago yeah and then you have these instruments which are produced these days which kind of mirrors the sound of that previous ancient instrument yeah let me put the heat a bit low because it's still winter but I have this heater and it's getting very very hot sometimes like very fast yeah so sometimes I spend so much time with my iPhone and my AirPods for freaking hours on that chair to make comparison yeah, of the sound and then I, I, I sometimes rent you know here in UK there's a lot of companies who actually uh, rent you a vintage synthesizer a vintage drum machine I freaking rent it a Jupiter 8 a TR909, an 808, it cost a lot of money to rent these instruments, but I wanted to bring it here with me so I can, uh, into my monitors and my other bits here, you know, so I can um, make comparison of the sound. How will a record produced with a vintage drum machine will sound and how a record with stock sounds from Ableton, from the computer will sound. Then I return to artists who are very established and they produce records by live making music live with a lot of instruments around them and what instruments they are using this is a very analytical discussion if i put it very straight you know um, but perhaps you if you become a bit obsessed because this is a bit of an obsession with making music and making your music a bit unique and becoming a bit aware that a lot of music sounds very much the same and um you want to be a bit different with what you do, you know, and um, yeah, perhaps you'll go to that point, or perhaps not, or perhaps you just make some music and you not care too much what sounds or what instrument you're making, but that's just me, you know, I like to investigate a lot of tools, and then I'll, I'll use them in, in a way of my own, yeah, so yeah, I'll flip the camera, and then I'll explain how things works yeah because i have a very complicated setup which i oh god it's like hundreds of cables and midi cables and all this it's very sophisticated it took me a long time to to get it right done yeah so i'll flip it and i'll show you how things works yeah here we back yeah there's a lot of tools and i'll go through them slowly yeah there's a lot of them starting from here but actually let's start from here this is a Roland MX-1 and this is, I call it my command control. As you can see, there's a lot of channels in total. Yeah, we have 10 channels and we have USB channels and audio channels. And this is, a, it took me a long time to set up things right with this because you see, to get all this stuff done, you look, this is not MIDI. Everything is audio, you see, audio, 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 audio. It's not like in, in Ableton yeah? or in DAW computer that you use the program you can create midi tracks you know and it's for it's easier when you work with audio you have to keep things in time in sync so when you press play to your command control your your sequence or whatever everything all this sausage of i have about 14 16 machines I have some some stuff there as well and all must be in perfect sync yeah so if one day you'll you'll have a lot of I mean, if you, I'm, I'm speaking about me, what I use, um, to get all this stuff, all these audio bits into one, one, one thing, so you can get audio, the most important, yeah, you will need a sound card, an interface, and I have there on Universal Audio Apollo, but that only has um, uh, just, just four inputs, yeah, 
so that's not enough i need 16 yeah so i i have this which this one all these tools i can plug them 10 10 different um 10 different instruments so i use this little instrument the mx101 roland the mixer so i can um get audio and this one sends audio over the usb 16 channels straight into daw um and let me move here a little bit yeah so all these bits as you can see yeah they all connected they send audio and it sends audio into this machine here yeah let me go back here again yeah the roland 606 the 06 which is the boutique version yeah uh, the, the 909 09 the boutique version the 303 03 which is the boutique version i i i only use the the 909 sound not too often i use it very i don't really use the kick yeah i only use like hi-hats sometimes i don't really like the clap from this i had a real 909 many years ago and the clap was so powerful and so beautiful so loud this one if i if i get the clap very loud how how real 909 is it just sounds very very digital and it gets slightly distorted so i'm not I'm, what i'm using from this i'm using the hats the ring it's very nice the hats the um, um also a little bit the cymbals as well so i'm not using everything you see i have a lot of machines a lot of them but i don't use every single sound from all of them for example if i come back to the 606 sound the 606 has a very very beautiful um the the, the hats are very like like should i mimic a little bit like tss, tss, tss. It, it, it is very very loud and very very wide yeah it's a very wide kind of a like it's like a fill so i use this to fill in gaps into <clears throat> into the pattern it's perfect for filling i don't use the um, the bass drum <clears throat> it's very weak <clears throat> the um, 606 bass drum it's very very weak it's like a poor man 808 <laughs> but it's all right in in some kind of tracks you can use the bass drum from cc6 but i always I use only the symbol i like it because it's a perfect fill-in for for center tracks yeah the 303 sound i don't use it very often i use it sometimes to uh if you get a cutoff very low yeah and the resonance very low as well and this one maybe the mood but kind of like that you get a very low low bottom end 303 but it's not really an acid sound it's more like a like a low frequency so i use it to fill in bass uh, like a like a low bass to fill in for example if i have a 909 kick and a bit of a this and i need a low frequency under to make the because 909 kick especially this one can be a bit quite thin so i'm using something else as well so i can make it more thicker um, you see all these machines i don't use every single sound from them but i only use certain elements so i can make one thing to sound very good moving here the juno 60 which is the boutique version uh the 06 i i decided to to have the small ones because obviously i live in one bedroom flat here in glasgow it's very small um but I just like to have these modules up you see you look at my hand they're kind of like almost the size of my size of my hand and um it, it's just right i like to have small things so i can because i said i don't use every single sound from 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 one machine i only use certain elements so it's like a sound design module i i love this back to this this one sound exactly like a juno 60 it, it I, I this is my most desirable and i love it so much this little one because i can get so many unique um sound sounds from from the 80s from the 90s classic house records which i love and have there um and yeah the, the, the juno 60 is just perfect you know these things they start to get very expensive because people realized those who sell them realize that they are very good and they emulate very good a big juno 60 uh, analog version 
which they go like 5,000 euros, 4,000 pounds or so, you know, but the boutique version is very, very good, an amazing thing, yeah. Back to this one, uh, this is a Casio SA1 keyboard from 1982, um, and it's like a tone bank, you select a pattern, it will make a sound, I, I just, I use certain elements only from it, so I can, so I can add fills between, between the, uh, between the tracks. That's a Casio VL, VL, uh, VL tone, that's the VL5, and there I have the VL, VL1 as well. Again, um, nobody pretty much uses these days in production, um, but if you add certain things that are kind of a rare you know you you can create something interesting to your records if you listen something what i produce some people tell me that isaac your music sounds a bit strange a bit weird because it just doesn't sound like other people's music so you see that's a very good when somebody tells you that because it means that you know all these things that you have like this is from like freaking 50 years ago almost it, nobody it, it has a unique sounds and you add those sounds and people crave for something different so it's good to have something different in your music. Coming up here, yeah, that's the boutique version of the 808, the small one, and it sounds like a real 808 almost, almost like 95%. It's very, very good. Um, I use the bass drum a lot. Like 90% of my tracks that I produce, I use this machine a lot. Uh, it just sounds like a real 808 to be honest. That's the most successful boutique I think from Roland. This thing, it's beautiful. And with the with the, with the 60 Juno, yeah. These two, I think, are the most successful boutiques. They just amazing. SH101, the boutique version as well. It does not sound like a real SH101, obviously, because it has polyphony, unison. It. Yeah, I mean a real 101, you know, it's monophonic, you know, but this one is kind of like a polyphonic thing, you know, but the most amazing thing about the SH-101, it's the amazing sequencer, which is so easy and you insert some notes and it creates these beautiful variations. That's what I love about 101. And this one has the real sequencer from SH-101. Yeah, you just press load and then you insert your notes, yeah. And then you press play and you can add random whatever hold yeah it's just amazing sequencer yeah moving here that's a this day speed tempest and this one is a proper analog machine is very powerful you can create some very weird badass sounds like very amazing stuff uh, i have this in you see that it still has the the thing that on um on a screen i have this from so we are in 2023 i have this in Mm, 2014 so i have this of like freaking long seven eight years long ago um this is a very powerful machines they become very expensive now they, they're like three thousand euros or whatever but i use this one the bass drum it's incredibly powerful and then you have this amplifier and distortion oh god it's incredibly powerful this um there's a lot of artists a lot quite not not that too many a few of the artists like dj stingray helena half who uses this sound in their productions like uh, luxrec luxrec is, is my favorite record label luxrec from switzerland um they have these unknown artists and they, all their records there they sound very very like the tracks, they, they don't sound like they are mastered. They sound like they are from cassette tapes, like like not too good quality the sound, but it, it's like recorded with analog machines and all that. And um, this machine emulates that kind of like a tape sound, like a cassette, a cassette, like a, like a, like a proper vintage thing. It's, it's powerful. I use the bass drum a lot uh, to create very unique, uh, bass drum very powerful i don't even have to use pro pro processing on this one it just straight away sounds huge the last track that i use this one a hundred percent this machine is father and son take away nothing it's a breakbeat track and i added some i added some distortion on the kick and i created the very beautiful kick a breakbeat it's amazing machine yeah 
Moving here, this is the Roland uh, TR8S. Uh, to be honest, I bought this about, about a year ago and I use it like maybe five times or so. I, I don't use it too much, but again, coming back to what I said about this stuff, yeah, I only use specific tiny sounds so I can create one specific thing, uh, a kick or a snare. Like I can create a snare from here, a snare from here as well. So maybe I'll create one snare using two machines. So coming back to this one, I'll sometimes use this. <laughs> what is good about this that it's like, it's a lot of sound design. You can sound design, go into the menu. You can add some processing, your verbs, delays. So I'll use this sometimes to add, let's say, a delay. I will have a fill in the background of the track. For example, two snares, two snares chain together, yeah, side chains. And I'll add, um, let's say, some some delay on two snares. Yeah, so all, all this, nothing works, only two snares and a bit of a delay. And I create some sort of like a tail. And sometimes you can create interesting stuff into the track, yeah. So yeah, very little use, very little use, yeah. Moving here, yeah. JDO, JDO8, which is the uh, JD800, uh, an amazing synthesizer from 1980s as well, but this is the boutique version. This is a very powerful uh, sound design thing. Have you ever seen movies like Rain Man? You know Rain Man? And all the early Tom Cruise movies? Uh, they have these soundtracks, which they are very dramatic and very mysterious you know and they've been using a lot of jd800 and d50 and d05 d50 d50 and the jd800 they are amazing amazing sound design powerful tools so i'll use this to create some very interesting drones into my tracks this one and the d50 the boutique version d05 and here i have the this is the original pg1000 which has been designed for the Roland D50. But the thing is that the original PG-1000 works perfectly with the D05 because inside this machine, it's the same circuit. It emulates the analog circuit of the original D50. So when I plug in from MIDI out to MIDI in, it immediately um, um, uh, all these parameters will, will change inside this machine parameters like you see i have so many effects here like hundreds of effects and it will uh, i don't have to go to the menu because this one has a very annoying stupid menu it's not nice at all it's very confusing so i have this stuff the thing is that the the, the pg 1000 which has been made in 1982 i think or 19, 1981 this one is like 1000 euros so this this one is two times more expensive than this. Can you believe that? It's incredibly annoying. Um, uh, this is the vocoder, is, uh, as you can see, there's a microphone here, VPO3, but it emulates the original vocoder, which is called the VP300, VP300 and 330, or VP300, which is like the size of a freaking bathtub. It's huge, like two meters almost huge old school synthesizer from 1978 and it's a very melancholic vocoder Kraftwerk, yeah Kraftwerk. they use the v the original vp330 they use it on their very very early Kraftwerk records um it has a very melancholic sound and very vintage it's immediately vintage so I sometimes use this in my tracks like for example there's a track that i produce it's called no emotion and i use this one with the with the microphone the vocoder another track called system 51 kill you'll see you'll hear some kind of vocals into the track very beautiful i use the vocoder as well the track called a memory i use this one another track um um, so the um, a memory uh, I use it as well. Uh, which which one was? Because I I every single day I make tracks. 
leave that aside yeah moving here yeah jx08 yeah j this is the boutique version made from the jx um jx8p yeah so if you look on the internet the jx8p it's a very huge 16 voice vintage synthesizer but the roland made a boutique version as well it's a very very vintage has a very unique sound and if i stop there for a bit i like to believe that good music must have emotion emotion empathy you must emphasize with people you must appeal to people's emotions you understand that it's so important to add emotion in your music a lot of music especially techno it's just percussion based and it's fine you know it has it's a lot of genres of techno it's like industrial techno which is based only on percussion very loud metallic elements perfectly fine then you have like melodic techno which is like um a, a, a lot of synthesizers a lot of vocals drops uh, climaxes and then you have the classic techno the detroit techno you know but i like to believe that people want to expect or to expect not to expect to appeal to people's emotions yeah and if you add pads lushes using synthesizers a bit of vocals as well you don't have to be a singer you, you can just experiment you will make your music sound emotional and that's good yeah that's very good add emotion to music yeah very good moving here yeah casio sk5 sk1 yeah these are very similar but the sk5 has very unique casio drums and I'll, I'll sample the drums, the percussion, yeah, the kick, the snare, I'll sample them inside, you see, I already done that there, I'm preparing uh, a, a production there, I've done this last night, I, I, I've been to church during the daytime, I actually go to church, believe it or not, then I come back home and then I do some recordings in the night time. Um, coming back again, what I said, it's very good, your music, to sound different yeah very easy to go there in ableton and then go to the stock sounds 909 sounds 808 sounds nothing wrong with that perfectly fine but everyone uses that stuff and your music is gonna sound like everyone else's and that's why it's so important to find any vintage tools that you may be on ebay or whatever stuff that nobody buys nobody uses and make music with crap stuff you might sound over it you might sound stupid but you see this stuff is like 20 pounds to 30 euros on ebay but i'm able to create some very interesting amazing things so don't be afraid to buy tools which are less expensive vintage nobody uses and you will create incredibly good music you know you have your computer there you record your stuff you add effects you change things you, you reverse you, you 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 become creative there yeah and you can create something of your own rather than the use what everyone else is, is using uh, might be a bit straight but it's good to be different the casio sk1 is more like the same like the casio s the sk5 you see has these pads and it has a lot of drums you can even sample stuff and then it's, you get very creative with this one but this one doesn't have any pads as you can see this is more of a vintage more of a synthesizer and i'm able to create some very unique sounds you see cheap stuff nobody buys this nobody uses everyone is going to the to the shops and buys the the, the freaking latest synthesizers but they don't understand that they're all the same sound almost digital sound you know nothing wrong with that it's fine yeah but it's good to sound different your stuff to be different yeah so yeah this is the you see, i have a lot of stuff yeah let me go a bit back there's a lot of tools as you can see a lot a lot of tools um and most annoying here is that you have to keep them in sync um but yeah coming back here uh, this one sends audio all this stuff that you see here is plugged here on these channels on the back um, and it sends audio and it also keeps things in sync yeah so as you see there's a lot of roland here a lot of roland 
a lot of Roland. Roland there, Roland, 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 yeah. And because it's a Roland machine, <coughs> uh, it communicates very well <coughs> with other Roland machines. And it keeps things in sync. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bit sick. <coughs> And it acts as a MIDI MIDI interface, MIDI control as well. So when I press play, everything is in sync. Yeah. So this is my studio, my dears. Yeah. Um, the thing with making music with real instruments is that first of all, first of all, you call yourself a musician. You are a real musician. You are a real artist. And maybe you're not a musician, but you will become slowly a musician and you will be a musician you see this is what musicians do they are making music with real instruments um, very easy to go there inside the computer yeah you make music very easy yeah but the music perhaps might not be i i have seen people who make music very interesting and very good with only the computer so you see if you have that skill and you find your one thing that you can make music with the computer, you must stay with that and never change that. Trust me, it's always good to find your one thing and don't change, just stay with that one thing because you learn that one thing and you, you just focus on production. You don't focus on learning other stuff. You see, I have a lot of friends who are just, you know, check the internet. Oh, there's a new synthesizer, a new drum machine. I need to buy it. But you see, when you buy that, you're going to have to spend your time to learn that fucking thing. Sorry for swearing. Because I, I went to the same stupid thing as well. I was buying and buying and buying. Yeah. As you can see, <laughs> it's not like I'm, I'm not feeling as sorry now. Because, yeah, I bought all this stuff. And I had to spend so many months to learn perfect all these machines. But I was making very good music as well with only the computer. And then I wanted, see, remember when I told you earlier that you will become more wise, more intelligent, you have more skill and you will want more. Yeah, you will want more. When I'm saying you want more, that means you want to be different. You want to become more, more advanced with your music, with your skills. You will start to in but that, that means you come to the conclusion and you are aware that you're going to have to spend time on learning each machine, reading the manuals, spending time on a chair, days and nights and all that. But you see, some people buy more stuff and spend time to learn one thing and they never use this stuff. They don't follow their dreams. They don't follow their passions. They just sell their stuff and then they come back to a normal job. See, this is an example, and it's a very true example, yeah? I've been through this stuff in the past. So you see, it's like a risk taking, buying stuff, spending time, learning, taking action, make amazing music. Nobody listens to your music. You get depressed, you get upset, you sell your stuff, you, you, you f don't follow your passion. You're, see, it, it's a very interesting thing, it can be, Annoying, you can be successful, you can be many things, you see. If you have one thing and you can make music with only the computer, stay with that. If you decide you would like to become a musician, make a career, or maybe not make a career in music, or maybe it's a passion, a hobby, and you will want to take to invest money, to read the manuals, to spend time there on a chair, to to you know, to not go out and because make is, you know, being an artist, it, it can be very lonely life. Seriously, you can be very lonely. It can be very depressing sometimes, you know. You will make amazing music. Nobody listens to your music. Nobody knows about you. You're unknown. You want more. You look on Instagram. Everyone is successful. You're not. So you see, it's like, it's like that. It's a, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe I should not explain it. <laughs> but yeah, this is me spending um many many years with all these tools yeah and then i learned them very well and right now i'm able to come home press play and i'm able to record one track in in one go yeah most of my tracks that you listen to them yeah i like to say that my music is good i like to believe my music is very good it might not be wow but i like my music because you see if you believe that what you make is good 
other people believe that yeah that they follow your 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 your, your passion you know it's, it's even if it's mediocre if you believe your stuff is good other people believe that because they believe in you yeah it, it's, it's very interesting how it works but i don't want to explain that too much i want to explain a bit this um uh, what i was explaining yeah um I'm able to record my music one track in one take and that that kind of advanced I become and I'm not saying like cocky or whatever but when you learn your tools so good you spend freaking days and nights on the chair and you read the manuals and you're you learn inside out perfect all your stuff yeah you don't have to spend too much you just press stuff you know what you're doing yeah you know what you're doing you're able to you you be able to become very very fast and very good at what you do yeah so i did i, I practiced so many freaking months months and months and when i'm sometimes i'm coming home and i i, I press play and i'm able to put a kick drum a, a, a snare a hat a melody another kick a, 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 a synth pad a vocal i'm able to create one track in one take yeah seven minutes eight minutes nine minutes and then I recorded everything inside, yeah. And then there, I will, I will master. I will make it sound better. So you see, the good thing about making music with real instrument, yeah. Remember what I said in the beginning. First of all, you call yourself a musician, yeah. You're a musician. Uh, that's what musicians do. They make music with real instruments. And second, you will be able to record music, yeah, in one take, maybe two takes. But the first take is so important you're able to record one song one track by just pressing play on your stuff yeah it's very interesting yeah so that's the good stuff about having real instruments of you yeah a lot of instruments so thank you so much for watching yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go there i know i'm gonna go there on a chair and do some reading i'm reading a manual uh, about a new instrument i'm gonna get in a few days um and then I'll, I'll finish this stuff here, yeah. Uh, seven, eight minutes track that I recorded last night. I just have to, uh, just a bit of cleaning, that's it. Thank you for watching, yeah.